Hello, everybody. Um, again, this is uh, John with uh, the next episode of Just Thinking. I don't, I don't remember what I'm calling the whole thing. Uh, but I had a question posed to me. Uh, so the, the question that I had was, uh, what does it mean to be a Christian? So the, the quick answer that I think I was able to come up with was, being a Christian means that one has dedicated their life to Jesus and his teachings. Now, there's a whole lot to take from that. That's, that sh can't go without <laughs> dissection. Um, so we can start um, with dedicate. Um, when it comes to dedicating, um, dedicating oneself some, uh, to something means to give their efforts to a cause or goal, essentially making uh, sure that that set goal is achieved. So... Now it's it's important. We'll come back to that. But next, we'll say um, that we dedicate. Let's talk about when we dedicate our lives to Jesus and His teachings. Um, what does that mean exactly? Uh, well, it means that our actions should be reflective of Jesus and His teachings. Then, of course, the easy question that comes up to that uh, in response uh, to that are our actions should be reflective of Jesus. Does that mean that Christians, that being Christian is all about doing good things and making sure that my Christian resume looks good when I get to heaven and turn that into the gates saying, can I get in? And that's not necessarily the case. Uh, from what I've understood things to be and mean, um, when I look at, when I look in these areas, uh, we, we'll have to we'll have to look at it in from a diff couple different ways. Uh, so the that brings up the question next, basically being why do we do the good things? Why do we, if you rephrase that, why do we make the sacrifices? Um, and sacrifices is an interesting interesting topic. Um, we'll not we'll not dive into that and go off on a tangent. Uh, I can guarantee you that the sacrifices that are being made are not and should not be uh, all about getting that good feeling I'm doing a good thing um, first the the reason we make the sacrifices is partly um, follow the two, the only two commandments really Jesus gave us to do um, is to love God above all and to love people and the statement itself is a very broad statement uh, but it closes out many of the arguments we see um, in the modern cultural and social um, discussion when it comes to Christianity. And especially recently, with abortion being a huge topic, uh, culturally and socially, whatever you want to call it, uh, Christians are seemingly depicted quite often as the, the anti-abortion uh mob <laughs> to put it lightly um, and yeah it's pretty much true uh, that if you're Christian you um, are anti-abortion um, now what was an interesting uh, point that had been brought up in a discussion uh, there was the the argument made that if you're Christian you cannot be for abortion Otherwise, you are not Christian. So, the question had been posed uh, to me from an individual asking, uh, what, is, what makes a Christian a Christian? And that's a, that's a big question to answer there. What makes a Christian a Christian? And like I said, the quick answer back at the... Uh, one that dedicates their life to Jesus and his teachings, right? Um, but one thing I want to get into with that is uh, what makes someone a Christian from makes someone a Christian from a religious point of view, I would argue to mean uh, the intentions behind an individual's actions determine the validity of one's claim to Christianity. So the actions that an individual does it's the intentions that determine whether or not the person's claim to christianity is valid i may say that differently it's the exact same thing but so if we look at the 
kick it to heaven as a standard transaction. Do this to get this. Uh, it's in, as most transactions are. It's do this so I will give you this. Um, do work. If we look at it in a modern way, uh, go to work and then give me the the fruits of your labor, the money, the part of your paycheck, and I will give you the goods the the food the products from whatever store um, in return and with Christianity it's the opposite way um, and this is the the way I've understood it and learned it so um, I think it's pretty universal to Christianity um, but I would love to have a discussion about that um, but what I've learned it's it's the opposite when it comes to Christianity itself in terms of that transaction, quote unquote, because it's not a transaction, but just for sake of discussion, um, the transaction of getting to heaven uh, is Jesus gives us our entry to heaven, and then we are to then do uh, the the goodwill. Now, the emphasis on that that do of now go do it's more so of a not uh, I'm giving you this so go do that it's more of a um, I will give you this um, and as you get to know me more you will want to go and do the thing the goodwill things uh, because when it comes to someone's intentions on things it's a very intentions on their actions it's a very personal matter it's not measurable like you can't measure my intentions for making this video my intentions for making this video could be one of many things it could be um, I want to appear smarter to everyone else or I want to gain popularity or I want to gain influence or I want to just genuinely talk with someone about things and there's no way you can ever determine that knowing that 100% um, only I can decide what, why am I doing these things, you know? And it's a very personal matter, you know? And Christianity itself is a very personal religion. Um, many other religions are uh, built to govern more so. Uh, they're less built on the the individual which is kind of reason why christianity has taken off in western culture because there's a lot of focus on the individual with western culture and the religion that fits individualism the most would arguably be christianity um now since we can't uh, measure or define the 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 actions of uh other people's intentions um, there is in a, from a Christian point of view you do have to keep in mind that God is able to see those uh, your intentions on doing those things um, hence why and it's, it's also hence why in the, the Bible you want to it says that uh, how to say specifically when do all things unto God so it's basically saying when you do something make sure you're doing it to as if you're doing it for God so you're doing it for with the at your highest performance or your best capability when in all things that you do so uh, the reason it's done like that is so that way your intentions are pure whenever you do things um, if you were to do something for your neighbor that was with ill intentions uh, you were giving him something so that you can receive something back or there's you're you're making the expectation that he will give you something back yeah. that's kind of an ill intention um you give your neighbor something from a christian intention uh, would be to give your neighbor something and expect nothing in return yeah. and so that's the whole reason part of the reason i should say for the doing things under god part um, but when it comes to loving people which is the other half of the, the two commandments uh, that Jesus gave. Uh, when it comes to loving people, the question that comes up to that is, what is love? The, that common question we all know and love or hate. But biblically, uh, 
when we talk about what is love. Uh, the verse I've always commonly referred to, and which I'm pretty sure everyone does, Christian-wise, um, is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, um, which basically just says love is patient, kind, um, it does not envy, it doesn't boast, um, it's not prideful, it doesn't dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong, um, it doesn't delight in evil but rejoices in the truth, uh, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And there's a lot there. Those three verses, <laughs> there's a whole lot there. Um, and, I mean, we could go into those uh, basically saying love is patient. Uh, when you're loving another person, um, people are not perfect. And so uh, people mess up. And being patient with people in there specific situation is uh, loving them, being kind to them. Uh, people often uh, hurt other people, usually because they are hurt as well. And um, to be to respond to someone hurt hurting you with kindness is what loving them would be. Um, that doesn't mean to let them off the hook with whatever they're doing, but you treat them with kindness. Not the love does not envy, um, as we know envy very similar to jealousy. Um, we don't wish that others did not have what they have, uh, and wish that we had them instead. Uh, so, from a biblical point of view, uh, anger towards the one percent for redistribution. There's a big d discussion on that one specifically because um, I. I think part of it does come out of jealousy. Um, and I get the, the, the good intention part of it, but uh, I think it's approached wrong with that whole... Uh, it, it just seems like there's envious ties in there. Uh, love does not boast. It doesn't... Um, prideful. Uh, the... With love, it, it's just not braggartly. Uh, oh... Uh, pride yourself in the things the good things that you do the whole trend on youtube a while was uh giving money to homeless people it's like hey look at me look at me guys i i i can give out money um i'm so kind i'm so generous look at me you know it's not <laughs> yeah it's not like that it does not dishonor others um so interesting with dishonoring others it's not necessarily about uh, conf confrontation to people's wrongs and things they're doing, but more so the uh, all the lines of slander. Um, it doesn't curse people. Um, in the whole, there's a whole. I've done multiple videos on cursing, but um, in terms of it doesn't uh, intentionally drag others down for the sake of feeling better about yourself. Uh, feeling more superior than another person. Oh. It's not self-seeking. Uh, and as kind of mentioned with the, the example of the the neighbor doing things for your neighbor, giving them that's with the intention of something else. Um, to love someone is not to do things so that you can get something in return. Oh. The self-interest part of love, it's uh, a selfless interest not easily angered um, now anger itself is not a bad emotion um, there is righteous anger um, but it's better not to be angry because when a person is in the state of anger there's a very good chance that something could go um, wrong in terms of committing a, a sinful act just because oh, as many people know who uh, have been angry before it's not as easy to control yourself in anger um it keeps no records of wrong. More so to mean um, you do not keep track of everything that your friend or brethren or uh, spouse or whatever has done wrong. It's not a, you've done this, 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 and this. Um, and so I'm going to hold that over you uh, to guilt you, uh, to get what I want, um, to whatever. <laughs> it, it's, it doesn't forget that someone does wrong 
uh, to you, but it's more so I'm not keeping a record of it to pull it back up to use against you. Um, it does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Um, truth, as I have found it so far, is not a fun thing to always find. <laughs> it's normally painful. Um, and we are to rejoice with that pain. So, usually the, the not taking delight in evil. Um, not, it's pretty a broad term of evil, but uh, evil can be perceived to be intentionally sinning, I guess is a way to do it, to say it. I'm not sure if that's the best way to say it, but it always protects um, so it always stands up for those who can't stand for themselves. Uh, it always trusts. Uh, if you are loving someone, you will trust them. Uh, they're loving you. They will trust you. Uh, it always hopes when you are in that communication with someone, uh, you are hoping for the best for them. You're hoping that, um, when they say something to you that may be wrong or do something to you that may be wrong your hopes is that the the intention was for the best and that they uh, were human and messed up um there's the the hope of good expectation um, and it always perseveres uh, love unending love is probably the one thing that uh, people Bible puts it, love is always perseveres, uh, even through the most painful, toughest, uh, rigid, ri rigid times, um, always pulls through. So you want to make sure that when you do things in love, that you know that in the end, they're all going to um, pull through and you can go into faith with that one. There's a lot you can pull from that one, that one single segment of verses. But I do think it's very important. Um, so if you can apply this one segment of verses to your everyday interactions and personality, um, you'll find that there's a lot of benefits that come with that. Uh, I say benefits not in a way, to, not in a sense to um, do these things so that you only receive the benefits because there are deficits that come along with it with doing those things and the deficits are usually ones that you're not expecting you don't usually expect those deficits to come um so i think that may be where i'll end this one here who have been going along a long time so if you guys enjoy these discussions um want to take part uh, feel free to put in ideas down below of things you want to discuss uh, write a comment saying talk about some things you want to talk about and bring up points in this video that I had brought up that you liked or didn't like. But to have a conversation with you. Well enough now to, to where I can respond to comments. Cherish these times. Feel free to join the Discord where we have conversation throughout every day practically. Uh, streams are over on Twitch where we have fun live act and have fun there live yeah if you can like and subscribe to the channel greatly appreciate all of that you can go do other things that I haven't decided what they are yet but yeah uh, the best wishes for all of you have a wonderful night or day whatever it is <laughs> Good night.